Thank you for joining me on our VAR and Impulse Response Function video. Please, before you watch this tutorial, I will advise you to watch the listed prerequisite e-views videos as shown on the screen. This is because it is important for you to know how to perform augmented decoupler tests for stationarity, know how to select optimal lags for the model, know how to estimate VAR and also interpret the results. So endeavor to watch these prerequisite videos. As a recap from what we did the last video, this is the three variable VAR model that we shall be estimating and our focus will be on the innovations or the shocks or impulses. We only want to know the impact of shocks to the variables in the system. So again, as a recap, this is the step-by-step -step procedure, but I'll be skipping step one to three. I will just move on to step four, five, six, seven. So please endeavor to watch this video so that we can all be on the same page. So now let's move over to eViews and take out a practical example. As you can see on the screen, my variables are in their log forms, PDI, PC, and JDP. And I have a quarterly data from 1970 quarter one to 1991 quarter four. So quickly, let us proceed to estimate the standard VAR. We go to quick estimate VAR. Here I list all the variables with my outcome variable being listed first. There are no exogenous variables, so no variable will be listed here. I'm maintaining two lags as indicated by the information criterion. I click OK. So this is the vector autoregression estimates. I will not be interpreting this because this tutorial is on impulse response. So endeavor to watch those videos so that you can know how to interpret your VAR result. So step four is done. Let's proceed to step five, which is to test for some diagnostics. So let's go to view, click on residual test. Autocorrelation LM test. We change lag 3 to lag 2 and we click OK. So the result shows that the errors are not serially correlated, so this is a good news. Next thing, go to View, Residual Test, click on Normality. We want to know whether the errors are normally distributed. The Koleski of covariance is indicated, we click OK. Our emphasis here is on the Jacobian result down here, and we can see that jointly. The errors in the VAR system are normally distributed. So this is also a good news. Next, go to view. Click on residual test. Now select white heteroscedasticity. It's also good to know from the prop value that the errors are homoscedastic. So now let us proceed to estimate the impulse response function. To do that, we go to view. Click on impulse response. And here we have the impulse response dialog box. But I'm going to modify the impulse variable to reflect only PDI and the response variables will be PCE and GDP. I'm only looking at the impact of shocks on PDI on how PCE and GDP will respond. I'm going to reduce the number of periods or horizons to 8. So I'm changing 10 to 8. Impulse definition I'll be using is Koleski degree of freedom adjusted. So every other thing looks fine. I click OK. So here I have only two graphs. The first one is showing the response of PCE to a one standard deviation shock to PDI. The second one is showing response of GDP to a one standard deviation shock to PDI. The blue line is the impulse response function while the red lines are simply the 95% confidence intervals. So your impulse response function must always lie within the 95% confidence interval. I have copied these graphs to a PowerPoint slide, so let's move over to PowerPoint. So looking at this graph, how will you explain the reaction or response of PC to PDI? From what we can see from the IRF graph, we can see that at the earlier stages, there's not much... Um, reaction from PC is almost stable, though positive because it's above the zero line. But from period 2 downward to period 4, PCE gradually declines. Between period 4 and period 5, PCE is in a stable state. And from period 5 upwards, PCE gradually increases. So the response of PCE to PDI is what I just simply analyzed. Let's look at the response of GDP to a one standard deviation shock to PDI. We can say that at the earlier stages, there is an increase in GDP. Afterwards, between period two and period four, there is a sharp decline in GDP. It becomes, it rests on a stable state in period four, B 
becomes negative because it's below the zero line, becomes negative between period five and period six is also, as a st is, is also negative. And we can also see a gradual increase from period six, even though they are still all in the negative zone. So the simple interpretation would be that at the earlier stages, GDP increases, then it declines, becomes negative, and gradually picking up. That would be the response of GDP to a one standard deviation shock to PDI. So if you need the notes to the interpretation I just made, here they are on the screen. In interpreting a standard deviation shock to PDI, what would be the response on PCE? You can simply say that initially there is no noticeable impact on PCE in periods one and two, but from the second period, the response gradually declines up to the fourth period when it hits the steady state value. Beyond period five, log of PCE rises above the steady state value and remains in the positive region. What will be the response on GDP? You can also say that initially GDP increases. This positive response now declines sharply up to the fourth period when it hits the stable state from where it remains in a negative region from the fifth to the eighth period, how be it with increasing tendencies. So you can conclude that um, shocks to PDI will have asymmetric impact on GDP in the short run and in the long run. But shocks to PDI on PCE, the impacts will be positive, both in the short run and in the long run. In conclusion, it is important that innovations and responses must be consistent with intuition, economic theory, or apparent expectations. Our results are consistent because with more income, people tend to spend more, leading to more consumption, creating demand for production, investment goes up, leading to economic growth. So this is how far we can go today on VAR and impulse response function in AVOS. If you need more referencing or more reading, please look at these textbooks I've shown on your screen. Also look at journal articles on how the estimated VAR and extracted impulse response functions. Thank you for staying with me. Subscribe if you have not done so. You can share my links and videos to your colleagues on every social media platform. Tell them that Crunch Econometrics is dedicated to beginners and intermediate users. Please don't go away. I'll be right back.